what are we supposed to do with these letters? Are these letters to the churches, are they for us, for that church? Is it for that time or for all time? What are we supposed to do with them? When we look at the scriptures and try to get an understanding of the scriptures, we are supposed to do apply these in two ways. One, look at the primary application, and then two, look at the secondary application. The primary application is who these letters were written to for what purpose, and then the secondary application is, is there an application for us to draw off of? In many cases, there's an application for the primary adherents, the recipients, and then also for us. In some cases, though, there are uh, applications for only just them, but we can learn the lesson from them. The question then, though, is, which of these letters applied to us? For example, if Paul makes a statement and we're talking about the context of the letter that he's writing in, do we just say, well, that's just for that time period, that church, that context, or are they intended for all of us? Well, it's helpful to know who the letter's written to, who's carrying the letter, and what they are supposed to do with the letters. In many cases, these letters are to be disseminated. We're going to look at that in a second, but remember, the Bible says that all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for the training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. Now, notice what he says. All scriptures, pasagraphe, which is all of the writings that are the ones that are inspired by God, they are inspired from God. They are God-breathed. And so all of those that we have that we know as scripture they are for teaching, proper for teaching, reproof, and for correction, for training in righteousness. Why? So that we can be edified, that we can grow, that we can be trained, that we can be thoroughly equipped. So does that refer to all the letters, all of the New Testament, all of the Old Testament? Sure, they're all profitable. Now, the question is, how do we take those? Well, a couple of things. We need to understand what these letters were for, how they were disseminated. Paul says this in 2 Peter 3.16. I'm sorry, Peter says this. He says that, uh, so also in all his letters, speaking in them of things, of these things, which are some things hard to understand, which the untaught and unstable distort, as they do also the rest of the scripture to their own destruction. In other words, Peter here is equating Paul's writings with scriptures, with the rest of scripture. So that goes along with 2 Timothy 3, that all scripture is inspired, including Paul's. And I want to make that point because Paul is doing something that all of the letters are also going through. We don't know this, and many might be surprised to know that most of the writings of the apostles, we never see. We don't see all of the writings that maybe Peter gave. We don't see the writings that, as a matter of fact, we've never seen the writings of Bartholomew. We've never seen the writings of Thaddeus, but they wrote they were over churches, they were planning, they were leading, but we don't see them. Why? Because many of them were not for necessarily for us, but for them, or they may have been just to kind of regurgitate or to reiterate what was also written. But what we do know is the ones that we do have that were written, they were intended to be disseminated to other churches. In 2 Thessalonians 2.15, notice this, so then brethren, stand firm and hold to the traditions which were taught. And the tradition is simply the words that are being given to you, uh, to the things that are being taught, whether by word of mouth or by letter from us. In other words, they were sending letters from one church to the next church, from one group to the next group. Why? Because, you know, they didn't have they did not have one of these. They didn't have a cell phone, so they couldn't call. They didn't have a landline phone. They didn't have the post office. They could not. It was hard to get information around. And so what would happen? They would take letters. They would write letters but also send those letters. So if the letter goes to one church, that church was to do one of two things. Well, probably two things. One, copy it if they could, but make sure though, whether they copied or not, to send it to the next church. Why? Because we needed to have these instructions, which by the way, when the founding of the church occurred, we had the apostles who were given this direct insight from the Lord Jesus Christ. But then we have these prophets who were also given these revelations. Why? Because we didn't have a Bible. Not everyone had Bibles to give you all of the revelation. So, so God would give people this revelation to do what? To give the gospel. And then we would have these evangelists that would go around and that they would share the gospel, like kind of like our modern day missionaries, which is what the word euangelistas, which is evangelist, which means euangelistas has the word euangelion, which is the gospel. They would go and give the gospel. So we needed people to spread the word. And one of the ways to do so was to have these letters Give these letters to people, to servants in the body, and have them disseminated. Some servants we know about, 
Some servants we don't. Some servants we know by name. Some we don't. Some were sent by uh, or carried by other apostles or by the people that they were with. But these letters needed to go around. Why? To train the people, as 2 Timothy tells us. An example of this also is in 1 Thessalonians 5, 26. It says, greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. I adjure you by the Lord to have this letter read to all the brethren. And so when these letters are being written, you'll see that the letters are written and so that the entirety of the church could gather, could hear them. I don't know how long, we don't know how long it took for the letters to be read because obviously people could not move around as quickly as we could today. They didn't have cars that got up to 100 miles an hour. They didn't have the road system, the infrastructure. So one group might hear it, part of the church. Another group of the church might hear it, another group. So I don't know how long it might take. But once it's read and heard and understood and taught on, then it would be given to other people. But to make sure that this point is done, that the letter is read to all the brethren. Why? Because they needed to grow. They need to hear it as well. In fact, there is another letter that actually tells us about letters being changed back and forth. Now, we have some writings from the early church fathers and other people that would tell us about this as well, but it's also noted in the Bible. For example, in Colossians 4.16, Paul says, Greet the brethren who are in Laodicea, and also Nympha, the church that is in her house. When this letter is read among you, have it also read in the church of the Laodiceans, and you, for your part, read my letters that is coming from Laodicea. So we see that there's kind of this passing back and forth of a letter to the next letter. We see sometimes Paul would come in as they would gather together, and then he might pick up funds or money to pass along, as well as um, leave a letter, pick up something. Those kind of things would happen. It's almost like this big, gigantic biblical logistics team. And what they were doing was getting the letters across, getting the word passed about. As a matter of fact, one famous person that I don't think people realize what what this person was doing. They think the person was functioning in one role, some who don't understand the scriptures. But in actuality, the person was doing just what all the others were doing. This is a person named Phoebe. In Romans 16, 1, he says, I commend to you our sister Phoebe, who was a servant of the church, which is Centria, that you receive her in the Lord in a manner worthy of the saints and that you help her in whatever matter she may have need of. For she herself has also been a helper of many and of myself as well. Paul used these different people. Phoebe was one as he's sending letters to her. I mean, with her to others. There are other people that would do the exact same thing. Timothy is also being used. So too is Titus. who are also being used to send letters, but also with them. They're also elders who are helping to plant churches. But still, as long as you're going that way, here, drop this letter off. As a matter of fact, when Paul is getting ready to die, what are they? What is he asking for? Some letters or some books that come his way, uh, and so you'll have these exchanges. And then when Paul dies, what is Paul also doing? He's sending letters out as well. So what you see happening, we don't talk about a lot, but these letters that we have, they are they are for the purpose of the entire body. Now, though every writing isn't written to you, they are written for you. And what we have to do is determine one: should there be a primary application or a secondary application? The primary application is in uh, is the children of Israel walking around uh, the, the walls of Jericho seven times. Well, that's a primary application. We don't do that. There is no primary application for us. The secondary application for us might be we just trust God. Whatever God tells us to do, we, we do. Primary application, let's say in the book of Acts, is that even though they have placed their faith in Christ initially, the Holy Spirit hadn't been given. Well, that's a primary application for them to wait for the coming of the Holy Spirit. There is no primary application for that as far as we're concerned. The only application we could take is just to learn how God was moving. For us, the Holy Spirit is given instantaneously, as Paul says. So we've got to be careful how we apply the scriptures, but we also must be careful to always use the scriptures. They are for our, as as Paul says, for our edification, for our equipping. And so it's just good to understand and know how the letters, the transformation of the text was being done, how warnings, how trainings, how things like that was happening so that everybody could grow. They don't have, they didn't have the technology that we have today with cell phones, with, with satellites and things like that, with roads and cars and vehicles to get things to. No, they were like, it was a lot, lot more, it was a lot more tedious, which tells you how much they loved the word of God. Think about that. They loved the word of God so much so that this arduous, sometimes dangerous, lengthy travel, they would go on. They would do it. Why? To make sure that other people receive the word and that they can also go and pick up words for themselves 
read it and take it to others. That just shows the level of love for the word of God. I wish that we would have the exact same love for his word as they did.